Okay, so here's the thing. When it comes to any of the camera equipment that we use, I can't judge it just based on the specifications. You have to weigh all the different factors. And one of the biggest ones is usability. And the weight of the camera and the lens is very important. This right here is the main camera we use for the tripod when we shoot Adventure Archives. It's a 24 to 120 lens on a Panasonic GH5. And then right here, this is the Sony a7S III with a 24 to 105. Look at the size difference. The weight difference actually isn't that much, but the problem is this is super front heavy. So the problem that you run into is that this is always wanting to go down. So if you do any type of low shots, it's always trying to tilt forward and it's even worsened when you zoom in like this. Whereas this camera and lens combination, look how much more well-balanced this is. If you wanna do a nice low shot, no problem. If you wanna zoom in all the way, no problem. This lens is very light. So even when it's fully extended, it doesn't add that much weight to the front of it. So now that we've established that the Panasonic GH5 with the 24 to 120 is better because it's smaller and more lightweight, the question then becomes, so why am I even talking about this right now? Why am I not using this camera? Because this camera with the huge lens on it has something called a full frame sensor. A full frame sensor is that big boy right there. And this camera is a micro four third sensor. Look how much smaller that is. Look at that tiny guy. Look at that big guy. That lets you do two things. One, you get this nice blurry background. On this particular lens, this is as blurry as you can get the background. Gives it a nice look. And this is with the Panasonic. This is as blurry as you can get the background. Blurry background actually doesn't matter that much in my experience. All things being equal, I would actually take the less blurry background and the smaller, lighter camera. But this camera also has another advantage, which is that in dark environments, the picture looks a lot better. But the real kicker is that this camera has amazing autofocus and this camera does not. Right now I'm using manual focus, so when I move in like this, it doesn't adjust. If I move back, it doesn't adjust. But back on the Sony camera, it has the most amazing autofocus ever. Look at this. Autofocus. Move back, move forward. It focuses immediately. So I want to use this camera, but in a body and a size like this. When I initially ordered this lens, this lens did not yet exist. This is the Sigma 28 to 70 millimeter lens. If you'll notice, it is almost the same size as the Panasonic 24 to 120 lens. Let's put it on. Okay, now we have the Sigma 28 to 70. Much more light and compact. If you zoom in, it's still not too bad. This is what the Panasonic looks like. So it's actually pretty comparable. And weight wise, it is also pretty comparable. So with this lens, we get the nice autofocus. We get the blurry background. The only downside is that you can see more with this lens. So right now, the maximum wideness this can get is 28 millimeters. This one goes to 24. You'd think 24 and 28 is not that big of a difference, but this is 28 and this is 24. This is 28 and this is 24. So it actually is quite a bit wider at 24, but when you consider the size, it's actually kind of worth the trade-off. The other trade-off is that this lens can't zoom in quite as far. So this can go all the way to 70 millimeters, which looks like this. This one goes to 105, which looks like this. I want like the perfect camera and lens combination, but it just doesn't exist. This would be almost perfect, except for it's too heavy and big. This would be perfect, except for it has terrible autofocus. This would be perfect, except for you can't zoom in as far as either of those, or zoom out as far as either of those. Then the question becomes, well, do I want a better stabilizer? Because this has a better stabilizer, but bad autofocus. This has a worse stabilizer, but better autofocus. But which matters more for the watchability of a video? Because lots of times it's the stabilizer, not the focus. So it's this constant juggling of different factors in trying to decide which is actually the most important. I'll tell you one thing. I took this lens and only this lens for the Savage Gulf video and it is way too heavy and way too big. It was so annoying. So I know that this lens has been completely ruled out no matter the other stuff. I have not taken this combination out yet, but I feel like this might be pound for pound 
the best combination of everything that I have right now. But let's give the stabilizer a test. In fact, let's pit this stabilizer, the best I've ever seen, versus this stabilizer. Now the same shot once again with the Panasonic camera. The lens gets a little wider. It has a great stabilizer, just there's no autofocus, so you have to do everything manually. And for my particular style of shooting, this is also an important shot. Is it wide enough? Is it stable enough? I don't know, I haven't used it yet, so I'm actually asking this question at the same time as I'm doing it. <laughs> and for my particular style of shooting, this is also an important shot. Is it wide enough? Is it stable enough? I don't know, I haven't used it yet, so I'm actually asking this question at the same time as I'm doing it. <laughs> anyway, I'm still refining everything. I've been refining my camera setup since the dawn of time, and I feel like I've talked about it a million times, which I probably have, but I guarantee you that I have not talked about it as much as I've thought about it. Oh, I've thought about it probably way too much. <laughs> I'm just glad that I actually produce stuff as well as think about this type of stuff because there's a tendency to just think about the theoretical and be like, oh, if I had the perfect setup and then just never actually make anything. So I'm glad that I actually balance it with actually making stuff, but we can rule out the 24 to 105. It is a pretty good lens, but it is too big and too heavy and does not fit my workflow. So we shall see how this 28 to 70 works. It's light and small, it looks great. Great focus. I don't know, it's, it's good. Yeah, let's get some test shots with it. But I'm liking it. Anyway, this works kind of just like anything else in life. You can never look at it in a vacuum. You always want to look at things in a vacuum, but all the different factors actually need to be considered. I love this park for testing stuff. Is it just such a nice park to do it at? Come on. And the usability of a camera and a lens, it's a 12 to 60 lens. <clears throat> it's a, oh, it's firecrackers. 